So if you are a leftist or just a good person, you don't see a lot of political victories. So whenever they happen, I absolutely want to take the time to highlight them and celebrate them. And we absolutely got a monumental victory out of California with regard to net neutrality. And uh, it's because net neutrality activists have been absolutely relentless and they defeated telecom giants. And when I say giant, I, I want to be clear, we're talking about behemoths, Comcast, AT&T, Verizon. So their lawsuit in order to strike down California's gold standard net neutrality law, it's over. And it's over because they're withdrawing. They are conceding. They're giving up. They're surrendering. And everyone who fought for this, you did this. As Evan Greer writes, we just won a huge court victory for net neutrality. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld a previous decision against the telecom lobby's attempt to prevent the California net neutrality law, SB 822, from going into effect. And they further explain, ISPs just dropped their lawsuit against the California net neutrality law after they lost three times in federal court. Huge win for digital rights and the open web. Now, this was unthinkable to me because these telecom giants, they have virtually unlimited funds. They could fight this forever. So at some point, if you just keep trying, you're bound to get a win. But they've given up. For them to uh, concede in this battle, that's no small thing. That's absolutely giant. California's law stands, and there's nothing that they can do to change that. Now, net neutrality is still not the law of the land, but because these states like California and New York and Oregon and Washington have our own net neutrality laws, well, they can't do what they originally wanted to do when Ajit Pai was head of the FCC and he repealed net neutrality. So what this is going to do is not necessarily make them retreat altogether, right? But I think that what they're going to do is refocus, perhaps at the national level. What they've been trying to do is block Gigi Sohn, who is an FCC nominee, and if she gets confirmed, then the FCC is no longer deadlocked. They can undo the uh, net neutrality repeal from 2017 that Ajit Pai, then FCC commissioner, had passed. Um, and if that happens, then that is their worst nightmare. Now, for additional details on this, Andrea Germanos of Common Dreams explains, associations representing the telecommunications industry on Wednesday dropped their legal fight to block California's gold standard net neutrality law following a string of losses in federal courts. The stipulation of dismissal was filed in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of California, bringing to an end a years-long challenge from major companies including AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast to Senate Bill 822. Passed in 2018, despite massive spending by the telecommunications industry, the state-level bill restored the Obama-era net neutrality protections repealed by the Republican-controlled Federal Communications Commission in 2017. Evan Greer, director of Fight for the Future, called the development a huge win for digital rights and the open web. John Bergmayer, legal director at Public Knowledge, also welcomed the lawsuit's withdrawal as great news. However, he added, the effort to enact net neutrality rules nationwide must continue, which means the Senate must act to ensure we have a full Federal Communications Commission that can restore these important consumer protections for all Americans. Other open internet defenders have recently urged the Senate confirmation of President Joe Biden's nominee to fill the empty and tie-breaking seat on the FCC GG zone. Now take a moment and guess who is blocking the confirmation of GG zone. Just take a guess. It's Republicans. How often, lately especially, have we heard Republicans screech about big tech censoring everyone? Well, the FCC has already stated their intent to uh, undo what Ajit Pai did. Now, what Ajit Pai did is give these telecom companies like AT&T, Comcast, the authority to literally throttle anyone that they don't like. Anyone. So, you know how you have internet currently? You have internet access that is, in theory, equal, right? So, when you go to YouTube... Netflix, um, any website, the speed is the same. But what these uh, telecom companies did was they lobbied very hard to have the authority to basically slow down websites, throttle traffic to websites that either they don't like, who were their competitors perhaps. And that absolutely is not just anti-consumer, but it's anti-free speech. And all of these free speech warriors on the right who are talking about how wonderful it is that a billionaire purchased Twitter so he can restore free speech are at the same time blocking 
this FCC confirmation, which would absolutely give the federal government more authority to regulate these free speech violators, these big tech companies. But all of a sudden, they don't want to do that. Hmm, I wonder why. It's almost like they don't actually give a shit about freedom of speech, and they're just shills for these companies. And what's interesting is that Ted Cruz, one of the loudest defenders of free speech, supposedly, back in 2017, before the FCC repealed net neutrality, he actually wrote an op-ed where he argued that not only should the FCC uh, repeal net neutrality, but they should stop states from enacting their own net neutrality laws. And Ajit Pai, like the good little puppet that he is, he then put that provision into his repeal of net neutrality and then passed it. So if you care about big tech and how much power they have, well, then you absolutely should be fighting for net neutrality because net neutrality is what evens the playing field. It doesn't allow these big tech companies like Comcast, Verizon, AT&T to censor their competitors or censor voices who they don't like. I mean, imagine this world where net neutrality was uh, repealed. There's a, a ton of implications, anti-consumer, but also anti-free speech. Comcast could know that if I'm one of their customers and I'm saying bad things about them, that they're busting unions, for example, they could throttle my internet access and that would be perfectly legal. Does that not violate freedom of speech according to these politicians? I mean, it doesn't violate the First Amendment because this is a private company, but they claim that private companies should uphold the principles of freedom of speech. And I absolutely agree. But if Comcast did this, as Ted Cruz says that they should be able to, does that not pose a greater threat to freedom of speech than Twitter blocking certain accounts arbitrarily? Rarely. I mean, we're talking about the control of access to information on the internet here. And this is a monopoly. You can't just cancel Comcast if they throttle you and go to a different company. Most people only have access to one internet service provider in their area. So you don't have a choice in this instance. You have to have net neutrality if you want to protect freedom of speech. Also, it's anti-consumer because if they wanted to, what they can do is they can basically disaggregate the internet. Instead of just selling you all of the internet where you have access to all websites, they can say, well, look, if you want to buy the social media package, which includes Facebook and Twitter and other social media websites like Instagram, that'll be $13.99 a month. If you want to add on our video program, that'll be $20.99 a month. And you get YouTube, you get Rumble, you get all of these uh, Netflix so they can easily fuck over everyone because these internet service providers, they hold all the cards. If the internet is going to be viewed as, you know, the public square or a public utility, as these free speech people like Elon Musk say, then they should be the loudest people fighting for net neutrality, but they're not. They're silent, and that's because they're full of shit. If you care about freedom of speech, net neutrality is one of the most important issues of our time. And so this is a huge victory here, but we have to make sure that Gigi Sohn gets confirmed. Republicans are blocking her, but if they successfully block her, then the FCC can't do what they have stated they want to do, which is reinstate net neutrality. Make sure that the playing field is even, and there's actually freedom on the internet. So I don't want to gripe too much because this is a victory, but the fight... It will go on, and I just want to let you know this is good news, but you've got to keep the momentum in this direction. You've got to keep challenging them. You've got to uh, keep advocating for net neutrality because it's not these idiotic right-wingers who are you know, pro-free speech as they argue against net neutrality. It's, uh, it's us, right? Back in 2017, I remember Ben Shapiro got massively disliked by his own audience because he advocated against net neutrality. I mean, people see through this, right? People see right through it. So Democrats need to take up this issue and they've got to fight because not only is it a winning issue, but it's an important issue. And I'll leave that there.